Hello, this is Rabbi Dr. Juan Marcos Rojana Gutierrez, and today we're looking at Philo of Alexandria as we make our way through the literature of the Second Temple period and discuss the passages that we find uh, in relation to Jewish perspectives of life after death. So Philo of Alexandria lived in the first century of the Common Era. Um, I believe he lived until about uh, the middle of the century, if I remember correctly. And in any case, he was essentially known as a uh, Platonic philosopher, but he was definitely uh, committed uh, to Jewish life. And of course, you have to take into consideration that Jewish life in the Second Temple period is in many ways uh, different than our perspectives uh, today, certainly in the classical Jewish tradition. But there are many things that uh, he uh, adhered to that uh, shows a, a sincere commitment to the Torah. Now, we're looking at his uh, commentary on the book of Genesis, uh, verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 7, and he states that which he breathed into, as his breathed in, was nothing else than a divine breath that migrated hither from that blissful and happy existence for the benefit of our race to the end that even if it is mortal, and then what's in the parentheses or the brackets or Greek uh, translations or transliterations of the pronunciation, in respect of its visible part, it may, in respect of the part that is invisible, be rendered immortal. Hence, it may be, with propriet uh, propriety, be said that the man is the borderland between mortal and immortal nature, partaking of each so far as is needful, and that he was created at once mortal and immortal, mortal in respect of the body, but in respect of the mind, immortal. So it's clear, at least from this particular passage, that uh, Philo believes in uh, the immortality, but it's the immortality of the soul that he is referring to. Now let's look at a second passage. He is speaking of uh, Abraham Avinu, of Abraham and the death of Sarah. And he states, briefly weeping over her body, Abraham quickly rose up from the corpse, thinking it seems that to mourn any longer would be foreign to that wisdom by which he had been instructed, namely that he should not consider death an extinction of the soul but a separation and parting of the soul from the body, returning from whence it came, and it came from God, as has been demonstrated in the account of creation. So again, the uh, focus for uh, Philo is the immortality of the soul. We'll look at one more passage here. And this is actually a quote uh, from Jason von Echren Kruk, who is commenting uh, in his work, uh, The Afterlife in Philo and Josephus, that uh, clearly, if Philo does conceive of a personal afterlife, it is not a personal bodily afterlife. And that's key, because as we've seen, there is a concept of Mechaye HaMetim, the resurrection of, of the dead. Uh, but obviously, we've seen other passages where there's a little bit more nebulous aspects to it. We don't know exactly what that means. Uh, there is a sense of an ongoing existence, but is there a, a, an expectation of the resurrection? So here he says, the resurrection of the body has no place in Philo's thinking. And I think at least based off the passages that we have seen, that's correct. In the end, the lack of a systematic treatment of the subject in the Philonic corpus remains a significant obstacle to any quest for clarity and specificity. While we can be sure that Philo envisioned some kind of post-mortem incorporeal existence for the righteous soul, the precise nature of this existence remains ambiguous. And in fact, I think that you would say that based off what we've seen, that this is really characteristic of many of the things that we have uh, come across. And that is that there are descriptions of the afterlife that are provided, but the details are often lacking. And there is this uh, un, you know, unspecificity, a lack of details that we see uh, in many of these texts. 